Hi, my name is Lina. <coughs> Hi, my name is Lina, and today's episode is all about DAWs, so the software on your computer so you can do music production, recording and all fun audio stuff. I teach in a university level Pro Tools, Logic and Ableton Live, so I'm here to tell you what's the differences between the DAWs, what they're good for, are they a best one and what is my favorite. So keep on watching this episode and you will know everything about these three DAWs. <laughs> That's for Digital Audio Workstation. Everybody says this one is the best, or this one is the best, or this one is the best, but how should you know which one actually is the best? I don't think there is the best, but they are all good for different purposes. But I think the best is Ableton Live. <laughs> Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. And today's episode will be all about doors. You will be learning everything that I just sang in the song. So let's get into it. Please subscribe in this point, actually, if you haven't yet, because this is a part of six episode series of how to become a music producer series. So hit the bell icon so that you will be notified when the next episode is coming up. And the last episode was actually about how to set up a music studio. Anyway, let's get into this video and talk about DAWs. Firstly, can I just say, I don't think there is necessarily the best one. I use personally all of them in different purposes and in different situations. So I don't think there is the best one. There is best one for you and best one for purpose. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, so the main difference between these doors. So main qualities, Ableton Live, very fast, fast workflow, good for performance. Pro Tools, it's really good to control a lot of data, edit a lot of data really fast and really efficiently. Logic Pro X, pitch correction, I love it for pitch correction, but also it's a sample based DAW, so it's really good for virtual instruments as well as samples. So personally, I think they all have the best qualities that I like using in different situations. Although my favorite is Ableton Live. <laughs> I'm trying not to be biased, but I am. So let's talk a little bit more about the different qualities between them. So there is layout, mixing and sense, drop down menus, samples, recording, performing and warping. So just to say Pro Tools and Logic are more similar. So they are linear workstations comparing to uh, Ableton Live, which also have non-linear workstations. So layout basically with Ableton Live, I love it because you have the session view and you have the arrangement view. Session view basically, as I said, it's a non-linear workstation. It's like a musical board, like a pin board. So you basically just add samples like this and then you can just arrange it. You can say that we have red pens and we have green pens. So then you can just play all the red pens together and green pens together and then you can swap them around and copy and paste them. It allows you to work really fast, a bit like how our minds work. Our minds wor don't work linear way. Our minds work like this. At least, <laughs> at least mine is like all over the place. Ableton Live Session View is helping us to kind of put those ideas in mind really fast into the door. Then Pro Tools, I find it a bit clumsy with MIDI and digital instruments, but it's so good. Linear workstation for editing and recording. It's so great with that. Okay, so next, mixing. So mixing and sense. So there's a massive taboo about Ableton Live that you can't really do mixing in Ableton Live. That is completely <laughs> yes, you can do mixing as much as you can do mixing in any other door. Like, it's not even different. It's just the, the names of the things and the, how they look are different. So example in mixing Pro Tools and Logic, you create example Orc track and then you go to the sense of the track that you want to send it the signal to and you go from the signal to the bus so that you can add reverb to other things. So, okay, I'm getting bias again, but... <laughs> But then in Ableton Live, you have return tracks. So they are like aux tracks. And then you have sends automatically on 
the, the track so you don't do any bussing. The main thing what I'm trying to say here is that you can do the same things with Ableton Live as well as Pro Tools as well as Logic. All do the same mixing techniques, they just look different. So you can do exactly the same things with all of them. Next thing is something I'm very passionate about and this makes me really biased about Ableton Live. Drop down menus. Pro Tools can justify drop down menus and different type of menus. Logic really can justify it, in my opinion. Ableton doesn't really have any drop down menus. It's just made so that everything is faster. You don't need to example do the buses. You don't need to do the sends because it's already there. It's out automatic. Logic Pro X, there's a lot of drop down menus. I feel like it's not justified. Why can it be just more simple like Ableton Live? I find it a bit clumsy, if I'm honest. Pro Tools can look confusing and really irritate you because it doesn't do things automatically for you. The reason why it does that, it's because it allows you to customize it so that you can handle a lot of data faster, so you can customize it for the project. Basically what I'm just saying, trying to say is that Ables Alive can look confusing, but it's actually much more simple. Pro Tools feels confusing and looks confusing, but it's so beneficial. Logic Pro X looks simple, but actually has a lot of hidden features in these drop down menus. Yeah. Okay, next thing is samples. So basically Ableton Live and Logic are very, very good for sample-based production. With sample-based production, I mean that you might have already recorded clips, you have a sample library. So in Ableton Live, you do have it on the left side. And then in Logic Pro X, you have a Apple Loop library, which is such a brilliant thing. You can customize the Apple Loops really fast because example Logic, changes the key for you automatically and stuff like that. Ableton Live is very sample based production method, but it's more, I would say, loop based production. So where sample can be a pre-recorded, ready existing sample, in Ableton Live, it allows you to create your samples really fast on the go, but it allows you to also add new ones and create new ones really fast in the session view. I think that's something common with Ableton Live and Logic, but those functions look really different. So Pro Tools, even though it doesn't have a built-in sample library the way that Ableton Live and Logic have, it does have a clip view list. So it does list all the clips on the right side that you've been importing or created in the session, which there you can drag and drop into this. You can upload your own sample library into the clip list and you can use it exactly the same way that you would use it in Ableton Live or Pro, uh, Ableton Live or Logic. Ableton Live, Logic, Pro Tools, ah. I get mixed up with the, with the names. Okay, so recording. And I think there's a complete winner <laughs> for in my eyes for recording function. So recording, definitely Pro Tools, in my opinion. Firstly, the fast amount of data that you can process with Pro Tools, great amount. The different versions of Pro Tools can handle different amount of data. So it's basically the CPU overload, overload is less, more or less likely on Pro Tools than Ableton Live and Logic where there's much more virtual instruments and things going on all the time actively. So they take up more CPU. So with recording, that is a very beneficial thing. So Logic Pro X has the same uh, playlist editing and record modes, example, and same type of grouping than, than Pro Tools have, but I do find Pro Tools smoother and faster for recording. And that's why, and that's why Pro Tools is still winning in the recording game most used all in the recording studios. Ableton Live for recording, but it's brilliant. It allows, it does exactly what you need. You can record multi-track recordings. You can do overdubbing. You can do everything you need with Ableton Live. I personally use it for recording almost every day, and I really don't have a problem with it. 
but if I go to a big session and I, I have a lot of, lot of microphones, I do prefer Pro Tools. Next one, performing. And guess what? The winner definitely from this category is able to live. Absolutely. It's just the best. But to be honest, I would say the performing quality of Ableton Live is good also for creative workflow. It kind of gives you the element of performing when you are creating. Where I find that Pro Tools are logic because it is a linear way, you can perform with them, but there's, not, there's nowhere near the same amount of functions for live performing and creative workflow as well as in the Ableton Live. And this is to do with the session view. The session view, there's no non-linear view in Logic and Pro Tools, unfortunately. So with Ableton Live, you have three different versions that you can buy. Basically four, because if you buy some controllers or interfaces, there is sometimes a free version that comes, so that's called Lite. And the next one that you can buy is Intro, then you have Standard, and then you have Suite. So what I can say about those different ones that I started with the free version, then I bought the student version of Standard, which really took me all the way to professional career. And then when I felt like I need Max for Live, I need more plugins, I need more samples that I can play around with, then I bought Suite. So the difference is that in the free one, you only get six tracks that you can work with. Otherwise, it's literally just the plugins and the samples. There's not much other differences. It just depends what you need. It's about 60, 70 quid. So not too bad, not too shabby, <laughs> shabby. Um, Logic Pro X is on Max. You can go to Apple Store, it's about 200 pounds. You also, as a student, you can get a package with 200 pounds that has like five different apps on it. So in Pro Tools, there is Pro Tools First, which is a free download. I think that the thing about that was that you can save. So with Pro Tools, you can do different type of subscriptions or you can do a package deal. Anyway, that was basically everything about DAWs that I could think of right now to say. Please let me know down in the comments if you have any further questions about DAWs and please subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next week, episode three of this series. So come back and I'll see you soon and bye. Bye, 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 bye.